Oh, you're... What is going on, everyone? I hope you're all having a great week, and welcome back to Chode Studios. Yeah, I don't know. Sex. It is FAQ time again, and you wanna know what's funny? You guys asked me so many good questions last time, there was enough for two videos. So this was actually filmed at the old house. <laughs> One, two, three, go! Would you ever go on tour with a few other musicians or YouTubers and do a set list of cover songs and some original songs? Once COVID ends, of course. You know what, Cyanide for All? That's a, that's a pretty good idea. But who would we choose, huh? We need a vocalist? We need at least one guitar player, maybe two guitar players, and a bass player. Who else would play bass besides Davey? I don't know about the guitar players. Maybe you guys should vote on that one, yeah? I feel like Ola would definitely uh, need to be the rhythm player, though, because he's just a... He's great! If the snare is so much more important, why do you have one snare and five toms instead of five snares and one tom? If you ask me, I wouldn't say that the snare drum is so much more important than everything else. I think every little piece of the drum kit is just as valuable as everything else on the kit. Even that little eight inch tom that I might not use as much as the rest of the kit, when I do use it, it really serves its purpose, you know? Same with the splashes. As tiny as they are, they matter with those sexy tom fills and accents. Yeah, those Barker fills too. <laughs> Who do you think are the most exciting new bands around right now? Also, Sex and Cutty. Great question, Sean. I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna go with Unleash the Archers. A lot of people have been requesting their songs on my live streams lately, and I've really been enjoying it. It's like awesome power metal. The vocals are fucking epic. Yeah. Unleash the Barkies! Hey, how long did it approximately take you to get to the point you could be really satisfied with your own drumming? If that's even a thing. Maybe I was like that when I was a little kid, and my eyes weren't really open to the all the other styles of drumming that was out there, and all I did when I was a kid was and I could do that really, really well. And I, you know, I was like fucking ten years old, and I was like, oh man, I'm so good. I'm I'm satisfied. Oh yeah, great. Nowadays, I don't know if I'll ever ever be satisfied with where I'm at. I've been doing, for example, I've been doing heel toe technique with the double strokes on my feet for at least two years now, and I'm still nowhere near satisfied. Like, I'm definitely getting better with it. I'm definitely getting more accurate. There's less popcorn, but yeah, like, that's just an example. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever, ever be satisfied. There's, there's always room to improve, I feel, you know? Even when you check out some new band and you end up really liking it and it inspires you to just, like, come up with new kinds of beats or, you know, stuff like that. Guess what, you guys? This video is sponsored by the 3DME Music Enhancement System by ASI Audio. These are in-ear monitors that have ambient microphones built into them, and I have never experienced anything quite like these before. What I'm usually used to are completely isolated in-ear monitors, so when I first tried these on, I was pretty blown away with how loud I could still hear everything else in the room, even with these properly sealed in my ears. I was actually upstairs in the kitchen when I first tried them on, and they were even picking up the sounds of the dog's nails walking on the hard floor across the room. It almost scared me at first. It comes with a body pack here that you can charge via USB, and this is what powers the ambience. And these plus and minus buttons on the top here are what controls the volume of your ambience, or whatever else in the room that you're picking up. So if you want, you can cut out the ambience completely, or you can blast it at full volume. But when you find that sweet spot and tweak it just right, it's almost as if you're not even wearing in-ears. It's pretty awesome. And I've gotta say, with the concrete floor down here and this big room, turning the ambience up on these really makes my drums sound huge. There's even a monitor output on here, which really comes in handy when you're trying to monitor your levels. Then you can go even crazier and download the ASI Audio app, which is packed with a bunch of extra goodies once you pair it with Bluetooth. And you can control the mic level directly from here. You can move it as one, or you can separate the right and left ears if you want. We've got a limiter if you want to set a volume threshold. There's even a seal test feature on the app that ensures you have a nice snug fit in your ears for the best audio possible. And of course, a seven band equalizer. You can tweak it to your exact customizations and save your presets. I love it. And it even comes with a nice sturdy gig case with some cutout sections very easy to transport. Use the link in my description to check out the 3D MEs for yourself, and you will start to hear incredible. Oh, yeah. All right, back to the questions, back to the eggs. What's one song you wish you could play but aren't on that level yet? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, there's a bunch. The only ones I can really think of are the extremely fast songs that sometimes people request on the drumming streams that I just physically unable to play because they're just way too fucking fast, like Flesh God Apocalypse or Infant Annihilator. Arch Spire, that involuntary doppelganger song, gets requested a lot, and I'm always like, you guys, I just can't physically play that. Are you trying to kill me? And it's not necessarily that I want to be able to, like, play Arch Spire. I want to be able to play Flesh God. It's just, 
I wish I could just play every single song that you guys threw at me. Why is the number 22 so consistent on your channel? I cannot tell you how many times a week I've been getting asked this lately. Should I finally just answer it? I don't know if there's a real reason, to be honest. I'm just a weird numbers freak. Coincidentally, it's also a third of 66. And I don't know, it's just, just fun to say. <laughs> just you wait for February 22nd, 2022. When you're doing drum covers, what do you have playing in your in-ears? A metronome or the song? Both. Always gotta have a metronome, for me at least. I just play a lot cleaner when I have a metronome to follow. And if I'm covering a song that wasn't recorded to a metronome, I usually have to put it in my DAW and manually make the click track for it, like Slipknot or Metallica, stuff like that. That's a pain in the butt, but it's worth it. There are apps apparently now that will make a click track for you. I think I need to check that out, yeah? See how accurate it really is compared to the click tracks that I make, which I don't know, I'm super picky with my shit, so we'll see. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all the entertainment. Question, which drummer, dead or alive, would you like to spend one week with? Portugal here. Check Moonspell. How's it going, Nuno? Oh, yeah. And I'm gonna have to go with Lars. I don't know, man. It's fucking Lars. It's fucking Lars from Metallica. I, I can't think of anybody else, dude. I guess I'm just a Bahri. What was your first double pedal? The Pearl Eliminator. It was pretty good. It was pretty solid, nice and heavy. It lasted me at least five to six years by the time I got the Axis pedals. But nowadays we have stuff like the Demon Drive, so I don't know, maybe I would have gone with that if that was released when I was first getting a double pedal. I don't know. <laughs> Do you plan to keep growing your beard longer or are you gonna be trimming it and keeping it generally the same length? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I guess that all depends on what my wife says. <laughs> Cause I don't wanna look like a full blown bush bahi. That being said, even before I had a beard, I would see comments on the YouTube channel be like, oh, you homeless bahi, get a job. I don't know, we're sort of growing this part. We've been trimming the sides, but We'll see what happens. Do you prefer playing in a band or as a solo artist? You know what? That's a tough one, dude. <clears throat> Especially since I've been doing stuff by myself for the past couple of years. It's kind of hard to answer that one right now. <laughs> Do you bring a smaller drum kit to your shows ever? That is a great question and I uh, discovered the difficulty of setting up a giant drum kit on the first tour I ever did. I think it was 2008 Thrash and Burn tour with Abigail Williams. And I brought an entire four-sided drum rack on that tour. And I quickly realized that I needed to condense it down to just two bars instead of four because it was such a pain in the butt. I'm pretty sure I had even more cymbals at one point too than I have now, but it just got, it was a little too much. It was excessive. Because everything that's on my kit now, I'm able to express myself abahi from my playing, just, you know, where everything is placed. But yeah, it's definitely a good idea to condense your kit, even if it's just a little bit. Anything that'll make your life easier, bringing it on or off stage, or even just carrying it to the car. <coughs> How do you feel about the new silent stroke heads and low volume cymbals? I think pretty soon I'm gonna get my hands on some mesh heads and do like a, a mesh head triggering video. Cause a lot of you guys have been asking me about that and it's been at least 10 years since I've had mesh heads or even tried to trigger with mesh heads. So I think it is safe to say that another fun gear review is gonna be on the horizon pretty soon. <laughs> Will you ever buy a new drum set or change anything about your drum kit? That is a very good question and hard to answer because I don't know. I've had the same drum set since I was 14 years old. I'm 33 now. I feel like I'm pretty happy with the way everything's set up and the way everything sounds. But that being said, you never know. I also fear change, so there's that. We do not like change. Any tips for recording drums? We're in the process of making an album. Thank you. Let's see if I can think of a few. Make sure your drummer hits really hard. Definitely record to a click track. Don't rush anything. Take your time. Make sure it's perfect and everyone is happy. Tickle my pickle? <laughs> okay. If you were restricted to only using three symbols, what would they be? I guess we're gonna have to go with a crash ride. One that we can crash on and ride on. I feel like I definitely need a splash and probably the hi-hats. Would we forgo the china? Or would we uh, pull the Lars and forgo the ride symbol? But no, then we couldn't have the crash ride. What do we give up? The hi-hat or the china or a splash? Shit! Uh, too hard for me, I'm running away. What did you feel when Mike Portnoy followed you on Instagram? First of all, I had to flick my testicle just to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Yeah, Mike's been one of my biggest influences and inspirations since I was a kid. So the fact that he thought that something I did was awesome, like, it, I fucking love Mike Portnoy, dude. Wow, a lot of questions. People want to know how much my drum kit cost. You guys. Why is it We all love your drumming channel, Sir Samus. But would you ever be interested in creating a second channel more geared towards gaming and reaction videos outside of music? I have thought about that, but first of all, I just really wouldn't 
have the time to do it. I do have a lot of gaming content that I do want to upload. There, we've had a lot of fun streams in the last couple of months. We've played Chrono Trigger, we've played Final Fantasy VII, we've played Zelda. I do have a lot of highlight clips that I would like to upload to YouTube. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should make a second channel for that because when I used to play Fortnite a lot, I did have like two clips that I uploaded to my YouTube channel then. And I got a lot of comments like, dude, what the fuck is this bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I'm still uploading drumming content every Tuesdays. Like I, I uploaded that one on, like, on a Friday or something like that. And people were still mad. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I make a second channel for that kind of stuff? Or should I just, I don't know. I was planning on just like having like special Friday uploads for gaming highlights. But who knows when I'll even get around to that because that's more editing that I don't have time for. Maybe if Tyler wants more work, yeah. What games are you currently into that aren't Raid Shadow Legends? Well, besides Raid Shadow Legends, I've been playing a lot of Raid Shadow Legends and uh, also a little bit of Raid Shadow Legends. And you know, at nighttime, I've really been enjoying Raid Shadow Legends. What made you want to have sex? <laughs> Al, can I have sex with Al? No! How can I improve or use properly the legs or ankles for the swivel technique? Oh! Practice. Still waiting for the re-uploaded Kill Switch Engage Hello Kitty guitar videos. Holy shite. Christian. Eggert. Dude, you remember that shit? Any of you guys in the comments, or any of you watching, you guys remember that? Way back in the day, probably like 2005, 2006, I had a whole bunch of Kill Switch Engage guitar videos on my Hello Kitty guitar. I would, I would... <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. I don't know why I deleted all those. I guess I was a self-conscious Bachi. Hey, there's Gareth Bradley. He says, if you travel when this pandemic goes away, can I buy you kebab and Jägermeister? Dude, that would be great, man. That was one of my favorite things about going over to Europe were the fucking late night kebabs. And I still need to get a bottle of Jägermeister for those Friday night sex hangouts. Dude, you're the man. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you to everyone who submitted questions and big thanks to ASI Audio for sponsoring the video. Seriously guys, go check out these 3D MEs. They are fucking awesome. And I guess that's uh, pretty much it. I love you guys. I hope you all have a great week and this concludes our broadcast gape. Click.